In this video, I'm going to describe the basic architecture of a GPU. But before I do that, let me just remind you of what a SIMD architecture is. So SIMD refers to single instruction, multiple data, where you have, let's say, a single add instruction that is applied over a number of small data elements. And so typically, each one of these data elements is a relatively small operand. So for example, it could be an 8-bit operand. And if what you have at your disposal is a 64-bit ALU, what you can do is you can pack a number of these 8-bit 8 8-bit values into let's say a 64-bit register right so one 64-bit register can be composed of eight 8-bit eight values and you can feed these 64-bit register values to this ALU and the ALU itself is decomposed into you know multiple subunits where each subunit performs adds on 8-bit operands so if you provide this additional support in an ALU you can increase your throughput greatly if you're working with operands that have relatively narrow values. And the single biggest example of where this is useful is when you're doing image processing. Because when you're dealing with images, each pixel is typically represented by an RGB value, where the R component is an 8-bit value, the G component is an 8-bit value, and so on. And when you perform manipulations on these images, you're applying the same operation on every single pixel and on every single RGB component of those pixels. So this is where single instruction multiple data architectures are most useful. So GPUs are taking this basic component of SIMD and then pushing it to an extreme so that you can maximize the number of these operations that can be performed on a single chip. So GPUs were essentially designed as graphics accelerators. They were used so you could do image processing applications really fast. But it turns out that there are many scientific applications, there are many general purpose applications that do exhibit high levels of data parallelism where the same operation is applied across a large number of values. And even those applications can be modified to run successfully on a GPU. And so that's referred to as a GPGPU where the GPU is being used to execute general purpose programs. And this transition has become easier thanks to good programming interfaces. So there's CUDA from NVIDIA, there's OpenCL from a number of other companies. And all of these make it possible to write you know, C or C++ based programs that can partially run on a host CPU and partially run on a GPU. And so this leads to a heterogeneous system that has you know, both a host CPU as well as a GPU. And you can also buy chips today where both the CPU and the GPU are found on a single chip. So now let's look at the basic architecture of a GPU. So let's first take a look at the application itself, right? So let's say that the application wants to go over a large amount of data. That's what I'm showing you in this box. And there is a large amount of data level parallelism. That is, I'm applying the same operation across all of these data elements. So I'm going to partition this entire workload across the many units of a GPU. The first thing I do is I take this entire data set and I partition it into many thread blocks. So each one is referred to as a thread block. And then if I look at my GPU hardware itself, the GPU hardware itself is broken up into a large number of what are called SIMT cores. So one thread block is made to execute on one SIMT core. The thread block itself is partitioned into what are called warps. So each one of these is referred to as a warp. So one SIMT core over here is responsible for executing a large number of warps. And so there is a queue of warps that are waiting to execute. In every cycle, you're going to pick a ready warp from here and execute it on that SIMT core. If that warp has nothing to do in a cycle, then you put it back into the queue and you pick a different warp that is ready to execute. Now each warp itself has a lot of work that it has to do. And so that work is itself partitioned into many units over here. And similarly, the hardware itself is partitioned into many in-order pipelines. So each pipeline over here is referred to as a SIMD lane. And so each component of the warp gets to execute on a separate SIMD lane. Okay, so you're essentially seeing this hierarchy where a given amount of work is partitioned into thread blocks, warps, and threads within a warp. And then similarly, the hardware itself has this hierarchical pattern where you have many SIMT cores, and each SIMT core is partitioned into its own in-order pipeline. And you have multiple warps that are all simultaneously sharing a SIMT core, 
but at a time only one warp is going to execute. Okay, so let's look at another figure that perhaps makes this hierarchy a little bit more clear. So here's my entire GPU. So this is my GPU here. And I take my application, break it up into thread blocks. One thread block runs on one SIMT core. The thread block itself is partitioned into many warps, right? So in this example, you'll see that in this SIMT core, there are a number of warps. Many of them are, are sitting in the queue waiting to get scheduled. The warp scheduler is going to pick something to execute in any given cycle and it's going to send it off on the SIMD lanes. So one warp itself has a lot of work to do and each one of those units of work is sent on one of these SIMD lanes. The SIMT core has a single L1 cache that is shared by all of these warps. If you don't find data in the L1 cache, then you go through a crossbar interconnect to the appropriate L2 that contains the data. If you're lucky and find the data in L2, then it comes back into the L1. If you don't find the data, then you go over a memory controller to access the external memory. And the external memory in a GPU uses better technology than what you see in standard processors. So standard processors use DDR3 or more recently DDR4 technology, whereas the graphics memory is lower latency, higher bandwidth, so it's one generation ahead of the regular memory that you see in traditional processors. So it uses what is called GDDR5 technology. And so you go over a GDDR5 channel to access your external memory system. Now, one more key point about GPUs is that when you have many warps active at the same time, and if you want to support very fast context switches between these warps, then you also need a very large register file. Right, and so each warp has its own set of registers and all of them have to be accessible in this register file. And so in a traditional processor, you know, let's say that in a traditional processor, you have support for only one thread at a time. When you perform a context switch, you take all your registers and you copy them into memory. And when a new thread comes in, it takes its registers from memory and then kind of initializes its register file. And that's what takes a large amount of time. And so context switches in a traditional processor take thousands of cycles. Since you're doing very frequent context switches between warps, you can't afford to copy values from the register file to the memory and back. And so that's why all of the registers for all of the warps have to be sitting on the processor. And that's why you have a very large register file that contains registers for every single warp in that SIMT core. So a GPU has a much larger register file than you would see in a traditional processor.